In this video, we're going to look at the Grand Reset Theory, also the San Francisco Mystery, some ruins of the DC capital, ghost cities in China, and finally a grand rant on alchemy. Welcome. Wherein this part is brought to you by Amnesia. I've looked at San Francisco so many times. Of course, we've looked at the World's Fairs and the impossibility to create these temporary cities, we're told, only to be torn down, things that would be impossible today. And we've had so many contractors in various trades weigh in on this truth. This style of construction is still baffling today. And often when preserved sites need restoration, the task proves to be an absolute challenge and often is not done with the same grace and finesse of the old world. First, let's continue with this San Francisco investigation. Of course, most people know the story. San Francisco arrives on the scene in 1849. And this beautiful picture that I show so often is a picture in the 1870s, 20 plus years after the first of the San Franciscan arrivals have settled. 20 plus years later, and we see a city like this. As I've said before, a city of a million people, no doubt. And not just some junky mining camp to accommodate the mining boom of 1849? No. Something very advanced. Something very old world. And this is baffling enough. Just absolutely baffling enough to wrap our heads around all this construction in 20 years. Giant buildings. Seeming like anything we'd see in Europe or other parts of the world. Not a single block is vacant. And we won't even talk about the fact that there's nobody to be seen in this city of a million people. We've discussed that before. Absolutely mind-blowing fact. Perhaps there was a pandemic that day. And most likely this is simply post-pandemic across the realm. This city is ripe for the inheriting. But not my point once again. As I said, mind-blowing enough. But suddenly, fast forward another 20 plus years, and we see destruction. A great earthquake and fire, a double punch, and suddenly the city looks like this. Wiped out, looking like the remains of any war, some kind of aerial firebombing. Just unbelievable. And this is part two of the absolute mystery of this city. Fire and earthquake? Creating this kind of damage? Just almost wiping the slate clean? Sweeping the streets of rubble? And yet leaving all sorts of what look like wooden power poles? Reminding us of the anomalies in modern times in California and so many parts of the realm. Leaving wooden posts and yet cooking out everything else. Unbelievable. All kinds of Devastation. So mystery A, the city sprouts up in 20 years, fully complete. Mystery B, it's completely cooked out. I mean, reset. Worthless. Surely there would be no survivors. But moving on to mystery C, is we see a complete rebuilding of this city. Every single block, and within no time, the city returns to its splendor. The streets built out and still looking old, as if there never was a great fire. Some things to think about. And in this segment, I want to show you some neglected ruins. This channel, P6, did an excellent little exploration. And what we're told is when they were redoing the Capitol building, the U.S. Capitol building, they pretty much stripped it of many of its features, 
sites that we're all very familiar with, the destruction of the old world. And in many cases, they dump these out and make piers in the ocean, such as seen in Brighton Beach. Ruins, pieces of pillars, have been turned into piers. But here, they just dump all of these capital blocks out here. And not just dump them out here, but as you see here, put them in an area that's off limits. And I salute this guy for going out and having a little look and showing us. Now, of course, they'll tell us that this is stone, but to me, it really seemed like concrete. And here we get a pretty good look at the intricate details and a piece of our history, discarded out in some backwoods. And if I was any closer, I would immediately go out here, have a look for myself. What mysteries can be found, even at face value, just absolutely fascinating. And how old is this concrete? Many of them have been numbered, you can see down here. And that was fascinating enough, but now he drives 25 minutes away to show us some old columns that were also at the capital site, and upon renovating, they would ultimately remove these columns. And here they are, reminding me of the Windsor ruins we saw in Mississippi. And the author of this video tells us at one point, they were all stacked in a pile, and finally they decided to move them to this undisclosed site. And some people visit it as a park, but otherwise it's not really known to the public. So here, a little slice of history tucked away, and we're told these were the original columns at the U.S. Capitol. And here we can see the top and just how ornate and detailed, seeming to be a solid piece. And just fascinating. I don't know what else to say about it. Just wanted to share this. Was it actually moved? Are these really the pieces that came from the capital? Or have these been out here all along? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised to discover that the story we're told is simply not the truth. And here I wanted to take a little look at Paris. Actually, we're not in Paris. This simply being a little replica. And pretty amazing to have a replica city. But how about when there's nobody occupying it? And this might be your first clue. We've looked at cities in this country before. Completely abandoned. Built for millions of people. And yes, this is China. China may hold the unofficial record for the number of brand new, so they say, ghost cities. And is China preparing for a reset? And for who? Surely all this isn't being prepared for the Chinese people, such an oppressive government. Then why would this communist nation spend so many billions and trillions on all these ghost cities found throughout our realm, while not letting their own people occupy them? And let me just tell you my theory. As we've seen in this recent pandemic, all governments are in cahoots. We know this from so many different red flags, such as the Antarctic Treaty, signed by all nations, pledging to keep civilians away. And so if we can accept that these bastards all work in unison, eager to take orders from anybody but the people, then we can also accept that they have a bigger plan. And this pandemic is just a little part of it. From what I can tell in the research that we do, nations Post-reset are kept primitive, initially. Much work is done, false wars are waged, and much destruction of the old world takes place. Once the infrastructure has been reorganized and suits their new false narrative, the country is opened up under this new pretense. Initially, the power structure dominates the industry. All sectors run by this controlling hand, and most everything is simply inherited, all the wealth and infrastructure repurposed and sold to the people. Now a corrupt government takes over, taxing the people to death, furthering their agenda. And now this controlling hand goes to work on other nations. I believe it keeps these nations in a communist political state of government until they've repeated the process. Destroying out of place architecture, things that would lend to a very advanced past civilization, or 
lending to a much older and advanced civilization. Anything over a thousand years old is definitely destroyed, bombed, burnt, whatever means they find suitable, natural disasters. And again, communism being the perfect tool for this initial repurposing and restructuring of nations. And I guarantee the communist nations are keeping the last secrets of the old world. And when I saw this type of old world architecture in North Korea, and even the parliament building in Bucharest, it really started to make sense. The communist vehicle being the perfect tool to indoctrinate your own citizens, keeping a very tight control of information. Is this the exact case with this particular spot in China? I don't know, but probably. And just a little something I thought I'd share. The most boring thing when it comes to making YouTube videos is editing them. And I'm currently editing, and it hurts my neck and strains my eyes. And most of all, pretty boring. Sometimes I call people, my sister or a friend, and I talk and they don't realize that I'm editing and I almost feel a little bad. But I probably shouldn't. Why be such a purist? As if I should exclusively talk on the phone? That would be ridiculous. But editing a video still seems kind of wrong. So instead I'm gonna talk to myself, which means I'm gonna talk to you. And there's so many things I want to share and talk about. Before I made videos, I wanted to have a radio show with a similar feel of the old Art Bell show, but better. So much can be discussed if the platform itself is just pure discussion. But I do love video and think it's important, but eventually would like to incorporate both. Chief and I recently went to an abandoned silver mine. It was absolutely fascinating. One of them called the Tintic Mines, one called the Goshen, and the other one was called Silver City. And it was absolutely amazing. I have a lot of questions and look forward to your input. And I've been thinking how I'll go about editing that one. Sometimes we want our art to be what we think is better. And oftentimes that's not necessarily better, but more the standard. Personally, I don't even know how to create the standard. I just do whatever I can do. But this particular mine video, I would love to present in a more conventional way. I'll probably just end up chopping it up, talking over the clips, and adding some music. But actually what inspired me to press record now, besides my boredom, is the super famous alchemist classic, The Mystery of the Cathedrals by Fulcanelli. This was recommended to me some months ago, and though I'm only about three quarters plus through, I'm completely blown away. And I don't know if it's just me, but I immediately want to talk to somebody, an expert, on this subject. And there's some out there, and it's very heavy, very strange, and yet very true, from what I can see. On the surface, there's a lot of topics that can be discussed, and finally, in alchemy, there are topics that can't be discussed. Seeming to be some kind of oath, which, if broken, I believe one will be cursed. And whether it's superstitious or not, who am I to break tradition so early in the game? And especially when I don't know. But yet I think I know. Of course, the book tells us that the cathedrals are basically a book depicting this understanding of the deepest of alchemy. And not just some superficial alchemy, like turning lead into gold, but a much deeper type of alchemy. A refining of substances, which then changes this matter into almost a living and breathing creation. And again, a huge portion of the book devoted to this mysterious secret something. Now we're told about certain things that we're allowed to know about in this concoction, such as mercury, very fascinating to us in this field, and also a sulfur, 
of sorts. And these two substances, along with a special water or medium, is rendered into one. One body animating another. Absolute yin and yang of opposing natures, and very heavy. So much of the book is devoted to this secret substance, and very difficult for me to not share absolutely everything that I think I know. But because this is such an ancient tradition, and I am such a novice in this particular field, I should only ask questions at this point. And if we were to successfully manage to fuse these opposing elements, which the alchemical books are very clear on how to do, heating for so many days at a certain temperature, skimming off any impurities, keeping fast to moonlight as sunlight damages young growth. And I ask myself, what are the final conclusions of this creation? To benefit oneself, eternal youth, again on a superficial level, some would seek riches, maybe just well-being. And maybe this formula that is written on the cathedrals, the story is told over and over with the sculptures and art. Just maybe this formula is being employed into the very foundation of these cathedrals, and hence ultimately our realm. And if somebody was trying to change the energies in this realm, we may understand why they would want to destroy these works and wonders of the past. And is it possible that even without the hermetic works that one could have figured this out? And the texts are pretty clear that yes, one could figure out this knowledge simply by observing nature. A lot of other thoughts it's left me with, and probably some I could simply do a search and find out. But one being how much mercury do we contain? How much percentage of mercury flows through us? And is mercury the original body, now animated by the spark of God? Well, I think I'm done editing for tonight. We'll see how this little rant turned out. So that's it. I thank you for joining me today. And do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.